Hello everyone and welcome to the Gumpla Network. I'm the Spicer and today's review of Code of Akia's Dark Magician Girl comes to you courtesy of those fine folks over at Canadian Gundam. Canadian Gundam is your one-stop shop for all things Plamo and Gumpla here in North America. With flat rate shipping to the US and Canada, a private warehouse option, and a vast catalog they restock regularly, you're going to have whatever you're looking for. So when you're checking that vast catalog and placing your next order, don't forget to use the promo code GUMPLA NETWORK to save yourself 10% off. Now, my kind of general thoughts on this are somewhat weird. I do think I like it better than the Wonder Woman that I built previously, and I do definitely like it more than the Lacus Klein I built. So as far as comparing it to like a figure I standard, I think this is slightly better. Um, I'll talk about why in a little bit. But this is still something that my personal taste has a bias to, I guess. This is something, and this is just a personal thing for me, but a lot of anime characters that aren't mechs, that aren't people in power suits or whatever, I kind of like more in a statue, a prize figure type form, right? Now, this I think is still a very good version of the Dark Magician Girl, but there are some things I do think maybe hinder it just a hair, and I'll, I'll talk about those more in a moment. But as far as the visuals of this kit, it's actually pretty spot on. Um, and now, of course, the box can be painted up, so the jewels are like a metallic color. Um, the little emblem on the front, I think, is painted up. I think there's some shading work here and there. But generally, like the out-of-box experience is pretty solid. Like you could just pop this on your shelf, and as long as you're not looking for those details, you're really not going to be dissatisfied with what you're looking at. Now, I will say that I think a flat coat on like all the light blue would go very, very far in making this look much closer to its anime counterpart, but that's just me. Now, kind of an accessory, kind of a visual thing, you do get two different front hair pieces with the hair swishing to either side. And then you do have four different face plates. So you kind of have her looking off to the side. Um, and then of course, with the two different hair pieces, it works with either. It's just, I guess, how you want to pose it. Cause you also get two different helmets for the two different hair pieces. Very odd they did this, but it, it's not bad. Uh, you also get a winking face, which once again, kind of works with either side, but the hair swishing towards the more open eye, I think does look better. So you have some options. Some of the faces work better with one side or the other, but none of them are entirely invalidated by one side or the other. You do get like a, a screaming face, an attacking face, whatever you want to call it, with both sides. Once again, works very well with either. Doesn't block the eyes, doesn't block the mouth, none of that. And then you also have the kind of concerned worried face or confused face and once again this is going to work with either one uh, i did all of these without the helmet on but you'll see the helmet for the rest of the video so i give you a little taste of no helmet i guess it also helps kind of distinguish the hair pieces a little better you also have the gym on the front of her like shoulder pads thing that i think is supposed to be painted in but there's no sticker for it so it's just plain plastic then you get the orange or kind of yellowy jewels on the kind of elbows, the pink jewels on the wrist, and then you get the kind of orangey yellow jewels on the feet. Plus one of the few pre-molded parts that is actually made in two different colors, the blue and the pink. You get one on the front and the back of the skirts. So now that we have the visuals down, what is this like to actually mess with? I mean, is it poseable functionally? Yes and no. You do get to stand with it, which is actually quite nice because I think more of the kind of Yu-Gi-Oh-esque poses are going to work better for that, but you can get her in a standing static pose that looks fine, have the wand over the shoulder. One of the concerns I did have in the unboxing was the cape 
is kind of molded in one position. I think for a Yu-Gi-Oh game character, I think that's fine, but I would have preferred it to like have two different versions that you could have like a laying flat one and a flying one. But regardless, it's more of a nitpick than it is anything. But at least in the static poses, you do get more mileage, if you will, out of the faceplates. Uh, it's kind of more the central attraction of the figurine, or of the model kit, rather, as opposed to trying to sell a dynamic action. Now, if you do decide to do somewhat of an in-between, it's a little dynamic. You can change the faceplate, wave the wand out, pull the hand away, and kick one of the legs up. Now, with the stand, this is totally possible. This is relatively easy to pull off. And for something that is a thing I kind of assumed I was going to be a little frustrated with in posing, it's actually not that bad. This is actually pretty straightforward. And overall, I mean, I think this is one of the more enjoyable kits I've posed around recently. Uh, now, of course, that being said, the stand does help. And the poses are relatively simple as they don't rely on the legs a whole lot. Now, we will see this without the stand in a minute, but just know the stand helps significantly. Now, if you do want her flying, you can absolutely do that. Pull the knees in, kick the legs out, and then have her kind of like reading the little book. The book is nice as far as its actual molded detail, but it doesn't have any stickers or paint that goes along with it. Or I guess you could paint it, but you don't get any stickers that go along with it. There's also nothing printed on the inside, so if you do want to do something with that, you absolutely can. And I didn't really sell the pose super great here, but you do have that side eye look, so you can kind of like have her reading it off to the side without it being directly in front of her. The book does also come with its own stand, which is pretty neat. And you don't see them here, but the bottoms of the stands are actually pretty cool. Uh, I really wish there was something else done in that kind of magician spell casting looking thing somewhere else on here but you know it is what it is and it, overall i think it's, it's quite fine now one of the things i do quite enjoy about this and i guess this is why you have the two separate hats even though it's just because the two separate hair pieces uh, the face plates really do sell this kit more than anything else. Like the posability is not it's gonna not gonna be its biggest selling point. It doesn't have any big effect parts outside the stands. It is really just the Dark Magician girl doing like different faces, like the winky face or the attack pose face or the kind of confused face. And this is, I think, one of the better representations of that. Now you do have her standing here. She does not have the stand at all. This is flat footed. And with a little bit of sticky tack, she can hold the book. So if you do want her like yelling off in the distance, like she just slammed the book shut to cast a spell, you can absolutely do that. Of course, the wand would help here, but this is very feasible, very reasonable. And the book is large enough that it takes up most of the space in the hand, so it doesn't look too awkward either. It's not too big. It's not too small. You can also have her point to the book. Now, like I said, there's nothing in there, but if you wanted to scribble some stuff or maybe print out a version of some text you want to put in there, scaling's going to be kind of a pain, but you can do it. Very, It's just flat plastic, so you could definitely do so. And if you wanted to paint the book pages to like a, a more tan tone, I think that would kind of fit the old tome, old book vibe that I imagine this is supposed to be. Uh, but you do have some interesting posability, and I think the creativity in posing this somewhat is its strength. Uh, the, the attack poses and everything are cool, but I think playing into the character and kind of the, I'll say the goofiness, but kind of the goofiness uh, does kind of help sell the vibe a little bit more. Now here she is next to the Wonder Waifu, which of course I did paint up some, so it is going to look different. But if you have other Kota Bakia kits, this fits right in. This is not all that drastically different. And yeah, I mean, I think it works. I would really like it if they would do other Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. 
Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any like Yu-Gi-Oh scale figurines or prize figures or anything to kind of put this up against, but it would still be a cool display piece if you have a lot of those. And kind of to round us out here, I mean, what? how do I feel about this? Like I said at the top, this is something I would personally probably prefer a scale figure, or not obviously a scale figure, but like a price figure, something that's already pre-posed, you don't have to worry about any of the joints or the gapping or anything. But I think this is one that it the model kit is not invalidated by that necessarily. You can absolutely have this and like the pop-up parade version of this or like a scale figure, whatever you want. Because I think you do get some more room to mess with it in terms of its posing that still feels like that vibe, right? Of course, a lot of Gundams and stuff, it, it's attack poses. It's, is it firing its gun? Is it using its sword? Is it a shield? Is it kicking in some instances? Here you get to lean into kind of the goofy kind of persona that is the Dark Magician Girl, and you can have some fun with that. So would I recommend this for people who've never seen Yu-Gi-Oh? Probably not, because the character and knowing the character to an extent is kind of the reasoning to get this. Uh, if you just like the design, go for it. I mean, it's still a fun build. But I do think having that knowledge, and even if you've not seen Yu-Gi-Oh! in like 10 years or more, if you remember this from your childhood, this is still something fun to put together and just kind of be a little silly with in terms of its posing. But those are my thoughts. If you like Yu-Gi-Oh! get it. If you've never seen Yu-Gi-Oh! you don't care about it, this is probably an easy pass for you. But let me know in the comments down below if you've built this, did you like it, did you have any problems with it? If you're on the fence or maybe looking to purchase it, let us know and we'll do our best to answer any questions you have about it. Outside of that, friends, thank you for sticking with me this long. I do truly appreciate it. And do your best to stay safe and keep on building.